Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Rich, for the introduction, and thanks, John, for giving me the opportunity to share my experience. A little bit about uh, Arizona Public Service, the company I work for. APS has been serving Arizona for 125 years. It's the largest uh, electric, electric utility in Arizona with 4,000 megawatt of generating capacity and over 1.2 million customers in 11 counties. And we are still growing, expected to add another 700,000 by 2030. Uh, APS serves two-thirds two of Phoenix metro area as well as several state regions, including Flagstaff, Prescott, Yuma, and Casa Grande. Uh, let me start with a little bit of uh, uh, video introduction about my program, and then I'll cover my learnings. Amber, if you can please start the video.
Thank you, Amber. All right, so I will talk about the key stages of our journey so far. As you heard from Brian Kearney, our CIO, and Stacey Dersetine, our Chief Customer Officer, a uh, high-level update. But I'll take you back to how we started this journey and the learning so far in each every phase of that journey. <clears throat> the journey we started was in early January of 2014. Uh, for seven, eight months, uh, we call that a pre-planning phase of the project in which we build the business case of the program. We uh, put together the, the, the as-is document for how we do currently business, and we also did a platform selection for Oracle, CCNB, and MWM, and OUCSS as a platform to replace the legacy platform. And we also hired a third party a company to help us select the right system and business integration partners. And next four months was our actual initiation phase in which we selected our SI and business integration partners. We selected our internal APS business and IT team, and we conducted 12 benchmark calls to learn how everybody else who have recently implemented uh, what their learnings are so that we can apply those learnings. And then started our transformation journeys from March 2015 with a plan to go live in March 2017. And I'll cover learning from each and every phase. So the pre-planning, um, as you can see that while we were building the business case, we looked at what are the key challenges with our existing system, which was more than three decades old, very tough to maintain, uh, very tough to keep it up and running. So many interventions were needed on a daily, weekly basis. And we looked at the way utility industry is changing and our customers' expectations are changing. There was no way that we could have kept the current system alive for too long. We made the decision to go with a new platform, Oracle Customer Care and Billing Platform, to meet the changing need of our regulatory bodies, uh, changing need of our, cust our customer, and also launching the new programs. The key step in the pre-planning phase was to understand all our key stakeholders' expectations, from our customer service executive leadership to IT leadership, our call center, business operation, field services folks, outage folks, and all the CIS op operations, the back office people who currently run various type of uh, exceptions to keep the bill going out, out uh, of APS. So we, we did a lot of deep dive with all the stakeholders to gather what we call the high-level expectation and the key business requirement. Uh, along with that, we documented our as-is business process so we know that when we go and select a new platform, implement that what it looked like in today's world and how they will change with the new platform. A key learning uh, during the pre-planning phase was that it was very important that our executives are aligned. Most of the time, uh, a program of this size, which require a lot of technological changes, a lot of business transformation changes, it's very important that both the leadership at an at executive level are, are, are on the same page. Uh, we decided in the early stage that the, the, this program will be run as one APS program and not as an IT or business program. The leadership uh, of this program will report to both CIO, uh, VP of IT, and Chief Customer Officer, who is VP of Customer Service. So the program manager, uh, which in this case is me, is, uh, is reporting to both the executives. At the same time, we wanted to make sure that we don't get into the, into the mode of boiling the ocean. The business case clearly articulated what all our key business challenges are, what systems we need to replace. We want to make sure that we do not uh, increase the scope beyond what our business case says. 
very important that we learn from others who have gone through this journey in last four or five years. So we did 12 utilities benchmark call, and we got a very good insight on what all their challenges were, what they would uh, not do if they have to start the project again, and, and we gathered that information and converted them to our guiding principles. And the last but not the least, the key uh, learning was that we involve our product vendor day one in planning every aspect of our journey in terms of what infrastructure we need, uh, how will we set up uh, the, the solution review board where we align with the product capability, best practices, and not uh, change the product. Our next journey was the initiation phase, uh, which included selecting the SI and the business integration partners, as well as setting up APS internal teams, both business and IT, coming under one umbrella. We branded the project, and we selected hand-picked uh, IT and business folks, including business analysts, including subject matter experts, including uh, the current CIS application support team, and also people who uh, build or support infrastructure, middleware. We handpicked all those people and created one common team for APS while we were working with a third party to select uh, the SI partner who will be in this journey with us. The key learning from uh, this phase was All the benchmark call gave us uh, four or five uh, guiding principles. Change the process, not the product. One team, one uh, location. And uh, we made sure that we continuously uh, uh, work with our executive team to get their input on what are important from their perspective. One of the guiding principles was added that uh, we, were, we are currently bringing a lot of new enterprise application, new EMS system, new ADMS system. We want to make sure that the CIS can talk to all those systems in a very consistent way and a seamless way. So we want to make sure that a guiding principle, one of the guiding principles is that while we are installing all these systems, there is a very well collaboration and coordination for interconnectivity. We want to make sure there is an earlier alignment with so many other existing planned IT systems which were in the portfolio. We looked at that to make sure that there are no uh, one which are going to be, uh, be, be, be causing any dependency on the, these major four or five systems replacements. And we uh, rearranged some of the plan because of those alignments. And uh, we work with a third party to make sure that we select the SI who share the same uh, vision, uh, same goals, and, uh, and make sure that we apply their uh, industry's best practices learning when we are putting together a solution for APS. And last but not the least, most important is we made sure that along with SI, we have product vendor working hand in hand in every step of the way to uh, select the right solution to meet APS need. Our next journey, which is we are currently on, is the transformation journey. That uh, journey uh, is primarily uh, we are uh, we just completed our uh, blueprint design phase uh, in 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 2015 time frame from March to end of the year, and currently we are in a final stage of finishing up the build, and then we start our testing from April, which will go on till end of the year, along with October onwards our training and the final cutover rehearsals in. January and February of 2017. This journey currently is uh, in full swing. We are almost finishing a design phase, 
and uh, we, we, we have just finished the design phase and we are just finishing our build phase now and uh, I'll share some of the learning we have so far. As you can see that this program, while we are finishing up the build and getting ready for the test, uh, the, it's very important for us to make sure that as we are preparing the solution to be ready, we want to make sure our business is ready to accept the solution. And this is where uh, we are working very closely with uh, EY folks uh, who are helping us prepare for the future state business. And uh, I'll request Brian to share uh, his learning and his perspective with us. Thank you, Jassy, and thank you everyone for being on the call today. We all know how important a CIS is for a utility. You know, it's the cash register of the company, it's the single largest customer facing application. So it's extremely important that we not only focus on the project and getting to go live successfully, but then also uh, the time immediately afterwards and making sure that the business really can take on uh, the, this new application, this new uh, platform for their future success and, and really help ensure that they are as prepared as they can be. And so there's a, a number of different things that we're doing uh, at APS to, to really focus on that. And there's uh, three, three major legs, if you will, and they're detailed on this slide. So one is really helping APS understand you know, the as is to the to be in terms of the transactions, and that's really focusing on their, their high value transactions that drive, you know, the bulk of the business and understanding what impact CCNB is going to have in terms of transaction volumes as well as average handle times or, or processing times. So understanding that gives us a, a reference point uh, to know what FTE impacts we're going to have. Uh, and then looking at workarounds and a number of other different things, we can say, here's what we think uh, the impact will be to APS, and then how do we mitigate that? And mitigating that, there's really a couple of different things that, that we will be doing. One is we're actually going to look at how we can reduce transaction volumes uh, initially at go live and then uh, allow them to open back up again as people become more and more proficient and can handle the volume. So. Uh, some easy examples are, you know, we won't recommend upselling at go live. We'll actually uh, try to suspend some activities that can be deferred for a couple of months, as well as calibrating the system so we don't even generate as many exceptions uh, that people need to look at. So that, that's a major component. And then the other, which is uh, extremely important, is trying to make sure that the end users are as proficient as they can possibly be. So uh, historically on projects we've done, you know, the, the classroom training, you know, there's been some practice activities, and this is going to take that and extend that by having end users focus in a dedicated fashion on these high value, uh, high volume processes. So the, the net effect should be, um, you know, APS will still go through some storm period as they're, you know, transitioning from, you know, product into operations. But that should be significantly less, uh, both in duration and in volume, uh, as compared to what other utilities have experienced when they've made this transition. So uh, that's where we're going, and certainly uh, delighted to be working with APS on this very important initiative. Jassy? Yeah. Thanks, Brian. So now I will um, share a key learning from this space so far. We are just uh, finishing up our build phase and we completed our design. One thing we felt it really helped us that we created a strong brand for the project. Everybody in the company know what Synergy is. It's, it's actually made of customer information and Synergy, three words, and uh, everybody associates the word Synergy with the customer transformation journey. Uh, we use multiple channels to communicate the progress, what Synergy is all about. We use a blog of our CIO and chief customer officer to communicate uh, uh, what, what changes are coming because of Synergy. We use our company's news line. We have two other uh, uh, channels, uh, news, there is a bi-monthly newsletter which gets printed and a postcard to keep everybody appraised or 
where we are in the journey, what to expect in the coming months. Other area, uh, we, uh, we focused a lot from the beginning, from the get-go was selecting a hand-picked team of IT and business folks uh, who were the best and the brightest, had the collaboration skills, had the willingness to do uh, this large initiative, which required a lot of hard work and a lot of team collaboration. We have business analysts, subject matter experts from different parts of the business who are part of our core, core team. We have several different part of IT organization uh, directly working as a full-time member of core team from application support to infrastructure and middleware. We also uh, uh, selected a business process champion from the early stage. We brought them uh, early stage uh, of the project to inform them uh, what this is all about and what their role will be for being the champion of the future business processes as we roll uh, the solution. At the same time, we created a safe environment so that people can change, challenge the status quo. We didn't want uh, to implement the old way of doing business using the new technology. For that, it was very important that people feel comfortable challenging each other and yet coming up with the best way of using the industry best practices, using the, the features which comes from the product to meet the future business needs. OCM, uh, organizational chain management, was one area which we wanted to make sure day one they are part of our, our initiative and make sure that they are the, 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 the team who communicates to the rest of the world, both internal to APS and outside, on when the change is coming, what that change will bring, what kind of job will change, and the whole line yard of uh, change in the organization to get a business ready for the future. And, and the, the last item uh, in our learning was that uh, our top executives uh, wanted to make sure that throughout this journey, there is a third party independent QA who have the full access to each and every aspect of the program and provide them uh, uh, independent uh, uh, view of how the program is being run. And I'll share with you that what are different areas the third party QA uh, covers on the next slide. So as you can see that uh, there are eight different aspects of the program uh, which are being uh, reviewed by the third party QA, starting from the project viewpoint in which they look at uh, the people who are part of the core team, stakeholder, non-core team, how everybody is feeling about the stage they are in, are they fully informed, or they have any areas of concern, and based on that they provide a narrative uh, bulleted uh, point of view. And they rate us uh, on five different scale from positive, optimistic, concern, potential failures, and failing. And in each area, they have a, a five-point scale. Uh, the other areas are project resources, uh, the skill, uh, the timeliness of joining the project, project schedule, which includes you know, the, the project plan, and how each and every activities are interconnected with each other, and the actual project activities, the quality of deliverable, and how every uh, aspect of the program is uh, being completed in a timely manner. And then, of course, the project management is another area where they focus a lot, how the overall program is being run, uh, how each and every issues and risks are being managed, et cetera. And then uh, the project scope, where they look at are we uh, doing a lot of customization, or are we staying close to the product roadmap, all that gets discussed in that, along with is there any other systems of APS which might derail this program, all that gets discussed in that area. And then knowledge transfer uh, is one thing which from the day one, uh, a lot of emphasis is that this is not an after 
uh, the fact activity. It has to be done along every phase of the project. When we are doing the design, when we're doing the build, APS team has to have a good understanding of each and every phase, each and every aspect. So when the time comes of taking over, uh, our people are very well aware of each and every aspect of the program. And the last one is the different type of risk both internal to the project and external are being looked at by third party to make sure if there is any risk which can derail the program. So they look at all these aspects and give the pro program rating and give the uh, narrative behind each and every aspect and give uh, this report to our program sponsors, uh, uh, two of the executive uh, program sponsors, chief customer officer and CIO along with the chief operating officer, chief financial officer, and executive leadership of transmission, distribution, and customer operations. They are part of our enterprise risk management group, and they work with them to create this monthly report and share with us. And we reviewed this report on a monthly basis to come up with any areas of improvement. So, um, uh, then I want to talk about our overall uh, different stages of this journey so far. Uh, we talked about the pre-planning initiation and transformation. The objective of that is to go live March of 2017 with the current version on which we did our design, which is the CCB 2.4 uh, Service Pack 3. Knowing that in the middle of uh, this journey, Oracle has issued uh, a new version and we wanted to make sure that we are ready to upgrade to that version as quickly as possible. We will be starting what we call a sustainability program towards the later part of 2016 after we are done with our most of the testing for 2.4. We will start the parallel testing in a very isolated environment to make sure that we, uh, we uh, run the same test cases which we run on 2.4, also run with 2.5. So when we go live in March of 2017 uh, and go through a few months of stabilization, we are uh, in a good position to put a quick plan to do the upgrade to 2.5. And that journey will continue uh, for future years as well so that we are uh, close to the latest version of the, uh, of the Oracle product suite. So the key uh, takeaway uh, from this journey so far is uh, the right balance between the process champions and using the industry experts. Uh, form a solution review board, strong governance for customization approval. It helped us tremendously to make sure we have the product design authority and SIs, a solution architect, along with our stakeholders, SIP, on a regular basis to look at any any changes coming uh, from any part of the business and see how best we satisfy using the product uh, inbuilt features. Oracle was part of uh, this journey throughout with us with their senior people from consulting, working hand in hand to make sure that we are not designing anything which will hurt us in future upgrades. OCM team, day one has been involved uh, with a high focus on both uh, high project morale, the team morale who's going through uh, almost two and a half year of journey, working very hard through each and every phase. We want to make sure that people don't get burned. Uh, we uh, create the morale high. At the same time, uh, make sure that business is engaged, stakeholders are engaged, and prepare for the readiness. Uh, there are so many parties involved. We have uh, SI and a BI uh, partners. We have a product vendor, uh, another third party vendors. We wanted to make sure that everybody is informed of all the key decisions. So we created this monthly all party vendor collaborative meeting, which uh, is happened face to face. All the key people, architects and uh, the management team uh, flies together on one location where we review all the prior month's key decision, design uh, decision, or uh, business decisions. 
that help us tremendously to eliminate the communication gap when you are dealing with a large initiative, multi-year, multi-vendor. At the same time, uh, we made sure that our success is tied with our partner success. Uh, we have a good example here. Uh, we have Oracle and Infosys, Infosys being our SI, uh, prime SI, work together uh, between them to come up with a test automation solution which uh, will help us uh, automate uh, a large number of test cases while we are going through a testing process to bring uh, extra efficiency to eliminate a lot of manual uh, way of testing. And uh, last but not the least, uh, uh, we have a huge uh, uh, team working from offshore. Uh, we made sure our APS team uh, is visiting uh, offshore team, working with them side by side to make sure that they have full transparency of each and every aspect of development work which is going on, uh, the documentation which is going on, and in fact, uh, even learning some of the boot camps training they have done for their own employee uh, uh, from them so that our team is much more prepared to take it over going forward. So that's uh, all I have, and I'll be more than happy to take uh, the Q&A. Uh, Rich, back to you. Thank you, Jassy, and thank you, Brian. You, you, you both, you finished so close to the planned time. It makes me think that that, that 30 seconds is counted at the start was, was on purpose. We've had a couple of questions come in. Uh, let me start with one. It says, uh, you're midway through the transformation stage. Looking back, what would you have done differently? So, Jassy, I'll pose that to you. Yeah. So. Um as we finished the design phase, uh, one of the area we felt uh, that there are some regulatory requirement uh, which uh, we were discussing as part of various work stream. Um, I feel if we could have handled them sooner, because some of them require longer lead time to go back uh, to the uh, the commission folks, uh, educate them and tell them that why we need a different change uh, to some of those practices. For example, how we currently run our prepay program, how we currently run our estimation process, etc. I feel I, I, we could have been a little better off, we would have handled them a little more sooner. Okay, thank you. I have a question about funding, and specifically, how you're intending to uh, fund this, is it going to be through a traditional rate case or actually a separate commission filing? Yeah, this uh, will be uh, part of our next rate case. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's a question about the, the two provider model and why did you elect to go down that path and can you describe some of the dynamics between the various parties involved? Yeah, sure. In fact, uh, we have selected our prime vendor to be uh, one party uh, who chose to be a co-partner with, uh, with another vendor. In this case, uh, Infosys being our prime vendor and EY, their co-partner for business integration. And between both of them, uh, we are getting the best of both worlds. Uh, of course, Infosys has the complete accountability from end-to-end -end perspective, but the areas they are using, uh, their co-partner uh, is the, the business process uh, review and uh, security, organizational change management and training. Uh, so it is basically between both of them, they have figured out what is the best uh, utilization of their respective resources to give the best uh, overall outcome for APS. Okay, thank you. I'll see if I can summarize this question. It, it's um, along the lines of it's, it's hard to put changing customer needs on hold for the three plus years, in your case, that it's taking to replace the CIS. How are you handling requests for enhancements or changes along this process? Yeah, actually, it's a very good question and uh, uh, a big challenge for us. Uh, but we have engaged our business stakeholder from the get-go. 
we have created uh, 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 what we call a customer advisory board cap process in which they look at uh, all the changes, what they need to continue to do to the current system uh, to keep their business running. Through the design phase, uh, we uh, participated in every of those discussions and made sure that those are absolutely needed and they were actually, some of them, helpful for us to get rid of some of the current challenges so they are better prepared to go live uh, with the new CIS. Uh, but as we finish our design stage, we have put an extra check and balance on any changes which are going, if it's going to impact uh, the CIS, we are trying to find an innovative way of how we meet the current business need with minimal changes or maybe some process improvement on the current uh, CIS uh, area and not necessarily the code changes which have a ripple effect on uh, the CIS replacement program which is in a final stage of the build and very soon getting into the testing. It's a very real challenge and a time will come where we will put almost 100% stop. We're trying to minimize that, but next one year or so, we will be in that stage where we will have almost minimal or no changes. Okay, thank you. There's a question about um, th th preparing the business for effectively using the systems and basically saying what level of planning is in place to ensure that the business can effectively use the new systems? Is this part of what the future state business model team is doing? Yeah, a part of that is future state business model so we understand how we run top uh, 10 transactions or top 20 transactions in today's world and how they will look in the future world, the comparison and getting prepared in terms of the resource needs, etc. But at the same time, there's a lot of emphasis internally on preparing for the training. Uh, how many uh, different modules need, what the curriculum looks like. We have involved our current training organization as well as our key business stakeholders leadership. We are all putting our head together to share uh, all the information we have gathered so far on all the 1,500 people who need to be trained. 500 of them are high end user, call center, back office, etc. cetera. Uh, what are the different tasks they currently do so that we can have a better, uh, well-organized training modules. Uh, different curriculums in a certain sequence, and also we are applying uh, some other innovative uh, methodologies to make sure that we create a proper job aids for them. We have come up with a gamification tool which uh, will reinforce some of their learning. So we are using uh, multiple channels to make sure our business stakeholders are engaged, well participating uh, in the business readiness activity from training to analyzing how the future will look and prepare for that. Uh, thank you. Jesse, there's a question about the conversion of the customers and whether or not this effort will convert both your complex CNI as well as your mass market at one time or perhaps are you um, tackling them at, at different times or electing to do just one set of customers, or, you know, the, the complex ones or the, the residential at this time? Yeah, we are uh, primarily uh, converting all the customers. Uh, there are some handful of very large, very complex customers which are uh, which are uh, currently built through another subsystem and that require uh, a feed from a next generation of MDM system, which we will be implementing after we go live. And those two to 300 customers will be converted after that. But all other complex large customers and all the residentials are converted in this go live. Okay, great. Um, this is a question I'm asking you, Jassy. I know you've been very open with other utilities and providing information in forums like this and with CS Week being in Phoenix. Uh, are you and your team planning to be there and are you open for, uh, are you open to other utilities visiting with you over that week if they'd like to learn more in person? 
Yeah, absolutely. In fact, a couple of utilities have uh, been visiting and also asked during the CS week. Uh, it'll be good for us to know in advance so that we can plan and maybe uh, combine one or two together. I already have a um, request from a couple of them, and we are in a process of, uh, of uh, scheduling some visits for them. I'll be more than happy to entertain that. <clears throat> okay, well, thanks very much. John, I think I've addressed the questions that have come in. Uh, at this time, if there's, I'll give it a, a minute to see if some others would like to type in a, a question. Otherwise, John, I'll pass it back to you. Okay, very good. I want to thank uh, Jassy and Brian and, and you too, Rich, for uh, putting on this webinar. It was very valuable um, and it was some great information. Uh, as we near the top of the hour, I want to be respectful of everyone's time, so we will conclude promptly. Um, if you have a question that's not answered, uh, please go ahead and record it. Uh, if it's not answered right now, we will uh, forward that information uh, from the CS Week office to uh, the presenters, and we'll get that question answered and back to you. Um, a few quick notes before we sign off. Registration is open for CS Week 2016 and Conference 40 in Phoenix. Uh, please visit the CS Week uh, website or call the CS Week office to register today. Uh, please make note that uh, our next Marketplace webinar, sponsored by Internoc, uh, the title is Making SME Customer Engagements More Impactful, will happen Thursday, March 17th at 2 p.m. Eastern. So register now to attend that one as well. Again, we want to thank uh, our EY friends and APS and all of you who are attending uh, this webinar today for joining us. Uh, we will conclude this webinar.